Welcome back, Malta Archery. Today, as promised, I didn't really promise it, I said I'd try it. A comparison between the Seiki Korean bow by Ali bow and the Black Shadow, which we got from Freddy Archery, but of course it's a Nomad. So, first, the first difference you can see is this leaf. Seiki, $200 by Ali bow. Provides you with with the sleeve, so and the sleeve. You know, the sleeve is not a normal. It's not mine anymore. Thank you, Rachel, for giving it to me. It's not a normal anymore. It has this pouch there, and then you can, you know, wrap this thingy around there, make your whatever. And then you can put your arrows in there, but there's a description and maybe I'll do a video about this. So you get this nice sleeve with a $200 Seigui bow by Ali bow. So then you are really set to go. Here and I have a few people told me now that you can even get this bow already 180, 200 euros somewhere in some shops. So I don't know. But still, Freddy Archery, $280. This is what you get from Freddy Archery. So, so f when we compare the... I mean, of course, you get a string too for this one. So only comparison for the what you get for the price. CGA wins in this case. It's cheaper and you have sleeve. So now let's have a look at the bows. They are... Same length, but you see the most significant difference is the flex in the handle. The black shadow flexes way more than the Segui. So you see that? Yes, you see that. Good. Then handle wraps. You have from Segui. A leather wrap which which had a stitching in the front and this raiskin arrow pass and with black shadow you have sweet leather wrapped around and you have here another piece of plain leather for the arrow pass so when you see the uh, manufacturing or the, the how they did it here Design-wise, aesthetically-wise, I would give a point to Segui because it looks more neat, more sleek. You have here a twine around, a whipping. And of course, here we have our carbon. So when you like more carbon, then this is the way you go. So then the, on the back, I showed it in the video of the Black Shadow. You see a lot of logos, stickers, names on it. You don't see anything on the... Segu. But the Segu has then on top a sticker. Some people don't like it, some do, I don't know. So then we have the string pads. They look almost identical. The Segu is a little wider, but even the, you know, the limbs are almost the same. So this interesting is when you compare the limbs, the, li the Segu is a 30 pound. Yes, it's a 30 pound. And the limbs are wider than the limbs of the Black Shadow. But of course, maybe a little thinner. And when you feel the Black Shadow, the belly has a slight curve here. So it's a slightly, you see, it just goes slightly up and down again. It's a slightly like this, whereas the Segu is simply plain and straight. So this makes this one look a bit more, I don't know, neater, professional, I don't know. So then the, the string, the, the sears, they look almost identical. So there is nothing to complain on both sides. And you have the leather hoodie on the black shadow. And you have a leather hoodie, which is a little smaller on the Segu, so there's no big difference. And of course, instead of 
carbon, black shadow, you have here another whipping. So these are the main differences, or mm, more differences, I don't know what I mean. So let's string it. Unfortunately, it's only now 30 pounds, but you know. So stringing, the segue, really easy. Tuck, done. Stringing the black shadow. Bam, bam, bam. Yes, and of course, always when I do videos here, the music is extra loud outside. But you know, not long anymore. This year, and then we are done here at the embassy. Uh, so this one needs a little more because you need to go a bit more back and forward, but it's still even for this big flex in the handle this bow strings really easy so then fine fine so this is how they look then strung so you see a slightly more curved part directly after the handles of the black shadow and a little more aggressive seer angle. Oh, yeah, no, you can't even tell. It's, it, it, it tricks you. The seer angle is only more looking more aggressive because the curve here, it comes straight back and then it makes this big angle, whereas the seer comes here in a long, nice curve. So that's why you see the difference. This is how they look like. Both are incredible bows. I only don't know. No, I think 30 inches is the max draw of the CQA. Draws insane. And I think up to there. Is it 30? This one draws insane too. Feels so good. I hear it getting hard. Uh, so they have the same length. This arrow is 30 two and a half or something. Until here and then it gets stiff. See you. It was way more, look, way more and easier. There's still no stacking. I don't know what the draw length of the Rosegu is. Holy crap. Draw 32 inches with ease. This one feels a little more restricted. So it depends what you want, guys. Oh, I start now saying guys. I watch too many YouTube videos where they always say guys. So look here. And then it gets, there it gets stacking. <sighs> so, draw experience. So, yeah, it's, it's, hmm. Draws a little smoother than this one at the end. So this one goes really, nothing, 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 nothing. And then it's like, okay, you feel it stopping here. Then it gets hard, but back there. Here, nothing, nothing, nothing. Now it's getting hard, harder, 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 harder. So here you feel the draw curve going up, and here the draw curve, like with with the segue, the draw curve like this, draw curve with this one. So feels a little more. Convenient. I wish I would have this one in 40 pounds. I could really compare both from the draw weight, but simply trust me, I can feel that. Shall we shoot them quickly? A few arrows in, yeah, of course. The thing is, both of them are so similar in many ways that when you shoot one, you don't feel the difference when you shoot the other one on another day. That's why I wanted to have the CEG back that I can really do a direct comparison otherwise. Both bows are amazing. So this is first and foremost, so, but let's shoot it. I draw now as long as it feels good. I think 31 inches and then we are done here with the music. See, feels 
really nice, but you feel the draw curve coming up. Now, as I drew the CG, hmm, comes up, comes up, comes up, comes up, but still slightly hum at the end, but mm. good. So, Della. Now let's shoot my Seguipo. It's not mine anymore, of course. <laughs> I sold it. So. Smooth, 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 smooth. The throw experience of this one is nicer. So it's, it's like straight back. Back, 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 until there. And you have a slight tick, but then it's done. So not hum. Nice, nice, nice. It feels more, feels more Korean. Here, here you feel the limit. You feel the, that, that the boat doesn't want to throw any further. When you're there, here, then it's like, whoa. Then it's really getting tough. And you still have this like, boom. Me and thumb rings. Two things they don't work together. It's an amazing bow. Nice spurring, huh? Only one which fits right now. It's it's a great bow. But look. You see the curve of the bow. You see that? It's so smooth, it's so smooth, it's so smooth, it's so smooth. Look. Feels so much nicer to draw. So. Optically, matter of taste. I like the, the styled handle of the Segue more than this one that looks a little rough and a little raw like I would have done it, but it's okay. The profile of the limbs, I like the, the nomad of the, with, the, with this on the belly with the slightly uh, rounded part on the belly. Good morning. Strings are the same, string pads are the same. The string pads on the uh, Black Shadow are a little thicker, but then you have the width of the limbs where the Black Shadow is a little sleeker. So this one looks a little more dynamic and that looks a little more plain, like, okay, out of more like Mass production. This looks a little more like mm, there was somebody giving a little more thoughts to it. But when it comes to shooting, I really have to say, Sigi makes the race for me. The draw. This is. Look at this bow. It's 28. 29 easy, 30 easy, 31. I think 31 is the limit. But look, this is uh, up here. It's, there's nothing. It feels still the same. Back there, it still feels so. Draw curve. Black shadow. 28 is okay. 29, you feel it. 30, you feel it. 31, you feel it. Oh, and then it's. You need to force the bow, so draw curve is like more like this. I wish the manufacturers would do these draw curves, then you would see more the characteristics of a bow. So please, you all Chinese and Japanese and Korean bow builders, at least, when the others don't do it, 
do it and you will have a benefit in the international market make a draw curve when you don't know how it works draw the bow and every inch you measure the draw weight until full draw every inch you measure it measure 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 and then you get the draw curve and then if you want to do you can go back from full draw every inch back and you measure it again then you see even the loss so to say in performance do this especially alibo you know the big ones do this it will give you good for your reputation and it shows that you care because this is a crucial part bows all look good they're all fantastic but then you draw them and you feel here you feel here really the curve the draw curve going up well Sigi flat 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 back there there's draw curve like this so this would be interesting to see because this shows the characteristic of your bow so please guys simply do it you have all big companies and good bow builders do this test put them on a you know on a stock with a thingy and then every inch measure the draw weight of a take a whatever 30 or 40 pound as a reference i don't know but then at least you see or, or take a low poundage and a medium and a high poundage of your bows then people will see what they have to expect i mean this i almost forgot how nice this bow draws and so this one i was like wow cool but here it's getting so tough and it's not that i can't pull 40 pounds Simply, I don't know. Did you understand my point? So, uh, speed tests I did on both, so I don't have to repeat that. That was not only my impression of these two poses, two poses of these two bows in a direct comparison. So overall, in my humble opinion. $200, you get the sleeve, you get for me the a bit more cleaner designed handle. Okay, you can love this, 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 you know, this, this binding here, this stitching or not. I'm not a big fan of it. I, I like it closed more, but still, even with, with, the, with the whipping and everything design here, clean, sleek, nice. The only thing here is the profile of the limb looks way more awesome on the black shadow. And of course, with this flex in the handle, you have here already more, you know, it looks a little more aggressive. Looks like it's, when you compare them, it looks more aggressive. This is more the female and this is more oh, male, oh, something for, you know. Uh, but this one, I said, Freddy Archery, $280. I heard now people or wrote to me that you can get them 180, 200 euros, even in Europe. Still no sleeve, so add another $15. And then the draw experience. I mean, when you like it rough, when you like to get it tough at the end, I don't like this. This is the bow for you. When you like it more smooth and more more subtle, the draw curve more subtle, then go with the Seigui bow. So I hope that this was helpful and it made any kind of sense to you, what I said. So, and then I would be grateful if you leave some comments about what you think and your opinion. I mean, morning. I mean, if all customers would write to these companies because of course they don't listen to me or maybe they listen to me but they don't do it if all customers would write to these companies please we want to have draw curves from you from a whatever let's say 20 30 40 or whatever 20 35 50 pound force them to do it I mean it's for them not a big deal every bow builder has his tiller stock and he can do this curves. maybe they do it even for themselves but they should publish them i mean i know like fairbow netherlands when he builds a bow you always get the draw curve with it because this is 
shows me way more than you know the speed is one thing or the same or not there's a little you know not the fastest but faster than others they have some horn in it but the speed is one thing but the draw experience is what makes a bow for me pleasing or not and then I have to say when I see the draw curve would see the draw curve of the CGA compared to the draw curve of the, of the Nomad I would always go for this one so if your bow has a nice draw curve you should better publish it but every bow builder should do that so please bow companies put draw curves in your technical specifications this is like when you buy a car you want to know the torque of the engine at which revolution so it doesn't mean anything when you know my car has 300 uh, how what torque oh, i don't know what the thing is but you need to know is it every 1000 revolutions 2000 or 3000 and then you see even they have these you know how, how the, the the performance of the engine goes up that you have an idea how the car will perform and this is the performance of your bow it's not only the draw weight and the max draw length so this is and please when you have a website and you show a bow always write the maximum draw length directly at the description because this is one crucial thing you need to know that so and even whatever or give a small bow pass with it you know make a small document with a bow this is a bow with 30 pounds maximum whatever you know do something make it a little easier for the customer they nowadays and when i hear all my facebook friends to whom i have contact on on youtube they don't know they have one bow at home they you know I, last time somebody wrote to me oh i bought now my third ali bow bow because of your reviews so these people have now more bows more than one if i have only one bow in my life of course i know the poundage and i know the draw length and everything but you know then i get another one and i get another one and i get another one and then oh wait uh, this is the 30 pound but what's the max draw length of this one oh i don't know anymore and then you need to check on the internet you know give something or write it there you know you have here a nice description of the name and whatever poundage and length right there you know it's 40 pounds at 28 inches and then simply one more box max draw 31 or 32 or whatever simply write it on your bows guys for the rest the draw curves and for the rest i prefer if i have to choose Sega would be my korean style bow to go with a small handle that's all i have to say i mean i said a lot <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.